Welcome to Asia's IS Institute. Looking at current affairs for 1st May, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these seven. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, recovery rate rises to 25%, says government. So, government has informed the country that India has reported 1,823 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. So, this is data as on 30th April. And the total number of fatalities actually have also increased and additional 71 deaths have occurred which has resulted in total deaths in the country due to COVID-19 going up to 1074. Also the total recovery rate is set to be 25.19%. Recovery rate means percentage of patients who have recovered from COVID-19. So, this recovery rate has also improved 25.19% people means have recovered. And this percentage, this recovery rate, two weeks ago was only 13%. So, this improvement is seen. Also, it is seen now the fatalities, number of people have died. 78% of them had comorbidities. So, comorbidities basically means they had other conditions too like diabetes or other heart problem, etc. So, there the fatalities due to COVID-19 has increased. Also, doubling rate across the country, it is said, is uh, 11 days now. National average is 11 days compared to 3.4 days before the lockdown. So, these are points being put forth to show how lockdown has improved the situation. So, doubling rate also basically means number of days it takes to for the number of cases to double. Like say, we had 20 cases. How much time did it take for the 20 cases to become 40? So, that is the doubling rate. So, doubling rate in 3.4 days earlier, uh, the number of cases were doubled. But now it is national average is 11 days. Of course, it varies from state to state. Some states have been seeing the number of cases increasing drastically. Maharashtra leads amongst the states in terms of number of cases in the country. Also, Ministry of Health has reiterated that as of now, there is no confirmed treatment protocol for COVID-19 and that remdesivir is one protocol which has been examined. Also, it, it has issued a detailed advisory on use of hydroxychloroquine as a prophylaxis and availability of hydroxychloroquine has been ensured. So, what, so, prophylaxis basically means a preventive treatment. So, this has been you know, asked to be taken by health care professionals too as a prevention from uh, contracting COVID-19. And here you can see the graph shows progression of cases. So, first set of 6600 cases occurred in 70 days. The latest set happened in 4 days. So, you can see in this is days taken from going from 1 to 6600. It took 70 days and then in 7 days we have increased. You can see in 5 days, 4 days. Finally, from 26,400 to 33,000 we have reached in 4 days. Number of progression of deaths is also set. First 210 deaths took place in 30 days. And then in 6 days we had number of deaths doubling. You can see in further 6 days it reached 630. And now from 840 it reached 1050 in 4 days. And progression of recoveries you can see uh, one, 1 to 1700 people have recovered in 31 days. And then now we have 8500 people recovered. So, number of recoveries progression is also shown here. Then the medicine which we spoke of remdesivir. So, remdesivir is actually a drug manufactured by US pharmaceutical company Gilead. And initial data shows that this drug is effective against COVID-19. It was originally discovered as a cure for another viral disease which is Ebola. So, it is, uh, it is uh, being proposed as a treatment for COVID-19, but it has not been approved yet. So, that is remdesivir. And this is another aspect which is mentioned here, pool testing. So, this was also a recommendation given. ICMR recommended pooling of a maximum of 5 samples so that quick test results can be brought forth. So, pool testing is been done means number of swabs together being tested. So, if they are testing negative means all people are negative. But if it tests positive, then whoever, everyone whose sample was part of the test have to be tested separately. So, that is called pool testing. So, all the swabs together are being tested using the 
test which is there for COVID-19 which is RT-PCR, reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction test. Because a huge number of tests have to be conducted, so this pool testing is a method for conducting the tests in a in a quicker manner. So here you have the detail regarding hydroxychloroquine. To hydroxychloroquine basically is an anti-malarial drug, and it is an interferon blocker, and it works by diminishing the immune system's response to a viral infection. So hyperactive response by the immune system is basically responsible for pneumonia and severe COVID-19 infection. So that is suppressed by hydroxychloroquine. A study in France had shown that hydroxychloroquine alone or in combination with azithromycin appeared to reduce virus levels quicker, prompting drug regulators in several countries including in India to approve the drug in restricted settings. But then several scientists say there are faults here, but then there we have no other option, there is no treatment, other treatment, approved treatment for COVID-19, neither there is any vaccine for COVID-19 yet. So, you can see then some uh, it is also seen that this, the dosages are also linked to instances of cardiac and liver damage so the wide usage may actually handicap people's ability to fight infection is also highlighted but indian drug manufacturers have sufficient stockpiles and uh, also we had initially banned hydroxychloroquine but then us president trump put pressure and he stated that this will have consequences for india because he had placed order for us in US for hydroxychloroquine from India. So, the hydroxychloroquine has also been exported by India to USA there. So, he revoked the ban and have exported to US. It had already placed an order before the ban. Then, here you have DCGI nod to Glenmark for trials of favipiravir on COVID 19 patients. So, Glenmark Pharmaceutical Company has said it has received approval from Drug Controller General of India to conduct clinical trials of Fepipiravir, Fepipiravir antiviral tablet for COVID-19 patients. So, Fepipiravir is actually a generic version of Evigan, which is a drug from Japanese pharmaceutical company, Fujifilm Toyama Chemical Company. So, Fepipiravir has also demonstrated activity against influenza viruses and it has been approved in Japan for treatment of COVID-19. So, this is a Japanese flu drug. And clinical trials have been allowed in India too by Glenmark. You can see this is antiviral drug, Favipiravir, initially developed to treat flu in Japan. And now it has been seen that it has shown positive outcomes in you know, reduction in duration of COVID-19 and has improved lung conditions too. So we saw one drug, Favipiravir, also Remdesivir, both are being you know, proposed as treatment for COVID-19, they have been compared here, you can see, but they do not have FD approval, so that means that uh, they have not been approved, this is US FDA, United States uh, Federal Fraud Drug Administration, so they have not been approved, but they have been proposed and clinical trials are going on. The next is GI tag to Manipur black rice, Gorakhpur terracotta. So, GI tag, geographical indication tag has been given to two commodities. One is Chakhao, which is a black rice variety of Manipur. And another one is terracotta work of Gorakhpur. So, this Chakhao rice is actually a scented rice which has been cult in cultivation in Manipur over centuries. And it is characterized by its special aroma. It is normally eaten during community feasts and is served as Chakhao Kheer. And it is also used in traditional medicinal practices too as a traditional medicine and this rice is also said to have the longest cooking time it takes 40 to 45 minutes for it to cook because it has fibrous bran layer and higher crude fiber content so that is chakha which has got gi tag for manipur and terracotta work of gorakhpur so terracotta is burnt clay basically it's a centuries old traditional art form and potters make various animal figurines like horses, elephants, camels and hand applied ornamentation. So, this art has also got GI tag. So, this is from Gorakhpur in Uttar Pradesh. So, some of the major products of craftsmanship include Hauda elephants, Mahavatdar horse, deer, five-faced Ganesha, even single-faced Ganesha etc.
So this is chakha rice, black rice. The khir being shown here. And this is Gorakhpur terracotta from UP. So they are baked clay terracotta products made from special soil found in Gorakhpur. And they have been provided GI tag. Then next is parliament project gets panel nod. So government's plan to construct a new parliament building has been approved by Central Vista Committee. So you should know what is Central Vista. It's actually the 2.5 kilometer long Rajpath, the road of New Delhi from Rashtrapati Bhavan to India Gate. So there are 44 buildings around it, including the Parliament House, the South Block, North Block, and government has come up with a plan to uh, have the entire four square kilometer Central Central Vista zone being redeveloped. So government's plan for a new Parliament building here has been approved by a committee which has been formed. This is called Central Vista Committee, which is chaired by Central Public Works Department Additional Director General. So video conferencing took place and the committee meeting took place and it has approved the plan for a new parliament building and but one suggestion has been put forth in the committee that design should be in sync with the existing parliament house. Also, there are non-government members in the committee too, but they were not able to attend the video conference. They asked for delaying it, but government said no to meet the timeline. The meeting would take place. So only government members were part of the Central Vista Committee and the new parliament building has been approved. Non-government members are members from Indian Institute of Architects, Institute of Town Planners who were not in attendance. So this is the plan, Central Vista plan. So, a new master plan has been proposed. It says that this uh, present structure has colonial ethos. So, something which represents Indian culture and social milieu has to be part of the central vista. So, new iconic structures shall be built. So, parliament house will be revamped. And even common secretariat to, meet, uh, to house various ministries, departments would be in place. So, for this, the plan has been proposed and uh, project consultant which has been approved for developing this plan is uh, a company from Gujarat, HCP Design Planning and Management. So this has, has undertaken consultancy work for developing the plan for which it has been awarded 229.7 crore rupees. So, government uh, would decide on the final plan too and it has set a deadline of November 2021 for complete redevelopment of Central Vista in August 2022 for the new parliament building. So this is the timeline as such to discuss. So it will be by the time India celebrates its uh, 75th Independence Day. The new parliament will be ready. But for this some changes have been made like uh, area in the Central Vista under the Delhi Development Authority plan, Master Plan of Delhi, it had mentioned that these are for recreational purposes, but those uh, areas have been changed for as, you know, uh, reclassified as for new parliament building or parliament building. So, that has created concerns. A petition has also been filed in the Supreme Court. So, this is a petition filed by Rajiv Suri through his advocate Shikhil Suri. And uh, presently, they are asking for withdrawal of this petition and a fresh writ petition which had been filed. So, that is being pursued now. So, uh, what they want is that this proposed change in land use in Central Vista is a cause of concern. So, this is 3.5 kilometer area and uh, this land use change. You know, from uh, recreational purpose to redevelopment of Central Vista. So, this has been, uh, you know, for parliament use, this has been challenged. And it is said the central government in May 2015 even decided to withdraw India's nomination to attain World Heritage City tag for Delhi's in the imperial capital cities from UNESCO. So, it is playing with the heritage of the country is being highlighted. Then next is March core sector output slumps 6.5%. So output at India's core sector had has contracted by 6.5% in March 2020. Means growth is in negative. Contraction means in the negative. So it is minus 6.5%. So 
So this is the data revealed by uh, government, Ministry of Commerce. So this is eight core sectors industries. So the index of uh, eight core sectors it forms 40 percent of weight in the broader index, which is IIP, Index of Industrial Production. So, eight core sectors data has been re released presently and it is in the negative. So, several of these core sector industries actually were exempted from the lockdown and they have seen a negative growth. So, overall IIP growth will be much lower. Even in these eight core sectors, you should know which are these eight core sectors. There is steel, electricity generation, cement, natural gas, crude oil, refineries, fertilizers and coal. So, these are the eight core sectors. Out of these eight core sectors, the largest component in the index is refinery production. So, we will see the, the distribution of these also. So, in the overall IIP, eight core sectors comprise 40 percent weight and within this eight core sectors, the maximum weightage is for refinery production. We will see that too. That is the largest component of eight core sectors. So, here also there was a contraction of 0.5 percent in refinery production. It is said for March 2020, coal was the only sector which saw some growth of about 4 percent. All other, all seven were in the negative. Steel had minus 7 percent growth. Electricity generation had minus, uh, steel had minus 13 percent and uh, electricity generation at minus 7 percent and steel electricity generation also account for 40 percent of the total index of eight core sectors. Natural gas went down, cement down, fertilizers down, crude oil went down. So, we will see the detail here too, you can see. So, this is the data, eight core sectors. This is the zero x-axis. So, how uh, the eight core sectors index has fed over the months is shown from April 2012 to March 2020. So, it's a, it has taken a deep dip presently. Even in the last few months of uh, 2019 too, it was significantly down. So this is within the eight core sectors you can see uh, the eight sectors shown and how they have been in the negative. Base year is 2011-12 and these two light blue and dark blue show the data for March 2019 and March 2020. So what we are seeing in the negative is March 2020 you can see dark blue been down for all except coal. That's what we discussed. And this is the status a year ago in light blue. And this is for the entire year. Then next is the weightage in the eight core sectors. You can see. So as we said, the maximum weightage is for refineries. It is at 28.04%. Then we said that steel and electricity together account for 40 percent. So, you can see steel is 17.92 percent, almost 18 percent and this is 20 percent, almost 20 percent. So, together they account for around 38, 40 percent. So, that's there. So, you should know here also this is a static data. Though month wise data would never be asked in UPSC. They did not ask you what was the IIP in March 2020 or something. But general questions can be asked like what is their weightage in overall IIP, 8 core sectors have 40 percent weightage and the individual weightage which has maximum weightage which has least, least you can see is for fertilizers 2.63 percent. You can be asked to arrange also. So, first comes refinery, then electricity, then steel, then coal and then comes crude oil, natural gas, cement and fertilizer. And this is IIP, overall IIP growth. So, data is available till Feb 2020. It was 4.5 percent growth in index of industrial production in Feb 2020. March 2020, so far we have got the data of 8 core sectors. IIP data would also come in a few days. And you can see it was in the negative in August, September and October. And IIP, it has uh, segregation even in uh, 3 broad categories that is manufacturing, mining and electricity. So, here also you can see electricity in overall IIP has 8 percentage weightage, mining 14.37 and manufacturing remaining maximum weightage of 77.63 percent. So, this is IIP shown over the last few months. 
over an entire year actually and feb 2020 data was positive 4.5 percent it was negative in august september and october it's expected to be negative in march to march 2020 and the last article is coronavirus is pulling millions back into poverty so this is world bank which says that for the first time since 1998 global poverty rates will rise otherwise global poverty rates were gradually declining but now covid-19 is taking us backward so there has been lockdown in many countries especially in the developing countries like bangladesh uh, many laborers were laid off because of covid-19 so workers in textile and manufacturing industries they have been uh, out of work now so the gains which the world made in fighting poverty are now at a great risk we are going to see poverty rates rising for the first time now in since 1998 and they said by the end of the year 8% of the world's population that is half a billion people could be pushed into destitution largely because of the wave of unemployment brought by virus lockdowns and world bank estimates that sub saharan africa will see its first recession in 25 years with nearly half of all jobs lost across the continent and south asia will likely experience its worst economic performance in 40 years and it is said most uh, at risk are people working in the informal sector and it is said they employ 2 billion people worldwide that they have no access to benefits like unemployment assistance or healthcare too. so this is a grave scenario which has been highlighted by world bank report so that is it these are the news items thank you